Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing about VLSI physical design concepts, especially floor planning, some of the tips uh, which uh, you need to be aware of uh, in order to uh, become a good floor planner. Uh, the process is very similar to floor planning of a house or an apartment or a condominium building. Uh, in the same way, uh, think about uh, the integrated circuits, uh, especially the chip. It has seven, eight metal layers, um, maybe uh, for advanced uh, seven nanometer or four nanometer technologies, so we have um, multi layers up to 10, 15 layers. So 10, 15 layers means you can think about uh, a building having 15 floor if it is a 15 metal layer process. All right. So first important, uh, first important question comes to mind. Why do we care about floor plan or how important is the floor plan? A floor plan is the first step uh, towards uh, physical design. After you have uh, you have done your uh, logic design, you have written RTL, you have done logic synthesis, you have done various checks, um, you have gone through um, time enclosure after uh, logic synthesis, equivalency checking, and full flow up to up to the post RTL. Um, Pre-RTL full flow you have executed till this point. Now you have a net list ready for a back-end engineer to take and uh, do the physical design. So if you see um, on a very broad level, top level, um, we have, uh, we can categorize uh, different blocks. Uh, such as uh, memories, one type of block. Uh, this is uh, an abstraction layer uh, which a floor planner or a backend engineer would think. Okay, I have memories, are different kinds of memories, flash, RAM, ROM, uh, third party IPs, I have a processor core, then I have a GPU core, ADCs, uh, analog to digital converters, PLLs, DACs, digital to analog converter, specialized analog IPs, USB, uh, and uh, regular standard logic. It, I can uh, I can broadly group uh, standard logic in partition A or partition B or partition one and partition two. That's a typical uh, typical layout structure or a typical uh, it's abstraction layer at first stage of floor planning, one may think of. All right. Now, you might ask a question to yourself that uh, I, I use uh, one of the industry's best uh, uh, physical design EDA tools. I work with them extensively. Why should I be too much careful about floor planning? Why can't the tool handle on its own? It's a natural question which uh, a you know a entry level engineer might think. Uh, nevertheless, we're gonna slowly find out why it is very important to have a good floor plan. So let's say in this typical example, if um, my logic uh, or my GPU it has to, uh, you know, give instructions to the piece of logic uh, in partition two. It has to follow through a longer route. So as you can see here, red lines, they are the connectivity paths, or you may think of routing channel, or you may think of uh, connecting wires. They have to travel long distance to connect uh, GPU with the third party IP, USB, and logic in the partition too. Same way you can think of the other parts of the, uh, of the chip. Different blocks are need to be connected to, to different other blocks. So uh, does it look like a good arrangement? Uh, 
think about um, this is a longer route say for example um, if you have to travel from let's say Toronto to Silicon Valley California okay you might take a longer route you can drive down and you or you can take a shorter path you can fly or you if you want you can take a little longer route go via sea way or take a ship or cruise if you have more time same way think about the same analogy my logic has to travel around the partition a to go to third party ip and to connect to partition 2 so i might be facing a lot of challenges in terms of routing congestion uh, timing issues signal integrity issues lot many issues i would be facing in in this kind of arrangement and uh, not a very good uh, idea here is there a better solution what if i partition one into partition one a and partition one b remember it's a soft logic you can you can partition it into two blocks and you can uh, so if you partition it there is a routing channel in between subpartition 1a and subpartition 1b you may call it vertical channel and now you can uh, route you can route through uh, through these uh, partition 1a and partition 1b improvement much improvement logic has to travel shorter distance so it's a very similar analogy. Remember um, in the history, if you have re read the history books, uh, the Panama River, okay? So when the Panama River was not there, ships have to uh, travel longer distance. They have to um, go to a longer route um, along the South America coast uh, uh, or North American uh, coastal periphery. So the idea came, uh, let's make a river, Panama River. So you, be, might, you might be interested in reading the history of the Panama River and so-called Panama City uh, is built and it's one of the very good destination to visit. Nevertheless, let's go back to, um, to our problem. So think, uh, think how did we do that? We partitioned uh, a bigger uh, block into two blocks made a routing channel and we can easily route the logic through that channel and we can avoid a lot of issues in this arrangement okay now do you think that tool will automatically do that well tool is not that intelligent first of all but nowadays tools uh, vendors they are putting uh, intelligence in their tools so tool might uh, suggest might not suggest so an engineer or a person has to look okay I can partition it here make a channel and give the uh, you know two partitions to the tool and now tool is very happy aha much better solution so see how um, how you can uh, improve the results having a good floor plan. Now let's talk about uh, some more tips, okay? Um, but before going to the tips, uh, let's briefly talk about uh, the EDA tools, okay? So EDA tools, uh, those who are not familiar with the VLSI physical design algorithms, uh, most of the VLSI physical design problems are NP-hard problems. Placement is one of the NP-hard problem. Okay, so NP-hard problem means that uh, it's uh, virtually uh, impossible to get the uh, most optimized solution. It depends on your uh, input, or the time complexity is uh, exponential depending upon your input size. You might want to, if you want to be particular about terminology here for NP-hard or definitions of NP-hard, don't hang on to it. Uh, just think about the idea. These are hard problems, difficult to solve. So for example, if you give 
uh, a initial floor plan, let's say version one, tool will produce version one um, placement. Now, if you slightly modify the floor plan, tool will produce another version of the placement. So depending upon what initial floor plan you give to the tool, tool will produce the placement results. Okay, A good floor plan is the key. So if, if there is a good initial placement given to the tool, any EDA tool, no matter what company it is, Synopsis, Cadence, Metro Graphics, or other smaller companies, um, their tool will produce better results depending upon the good initial floor plan or initial placement guidance. Uh, so you see the answer of the question which we raised in the beginning of the lecture. A good floor plan is the key for producing quality results. Good. Now let's talk about some, some tips. Okay. Uh, memory placement, third party IP placement, macro placement, uh, uh, these are more or less standard techniques. Uh, let's focus on the always on block. So today's SOCs or system on chips, they have uh, certain, um, they have many always on blocks actually. Um, but here let's for, for example, for talking purpose, let's say one block is always on block in this uh, floor plan, okay? Always on block means that it has to be powered on all the time. You may switch off different other uh, portions of the chip to save power and which inherently you are basically uh, basically your chip could not going to be heat up uh, that much. Think about if all the parts of the chip are on all the time, first of all, too much power consumption, uh, power in, in terms of uh, static leakage power, whatnot, different things, and that leads to uh, higher uh, temperatures on chip temperatures, a major concern uh, these days for advanced nanometer technologies. So nevertheless, uh, what do we do with this always on block? Where do we place? Okay. Good question. Now, um, always on block needs to be connected all the time with the always on pad. Okay. So there are different kinds of IO pads. Uh, so here, uh, for an example, we need to connect always on block to the always on pad. Okay. So this block can never be switched off. Good. So where do we connect? So if, if always on block is in this position, we have to uh, make a longer uh, wire connection from the always on pad to always on block. And that uh, will have its own problems because this will need special attention um, these this power line, uh, I mean usually power lines are, are noise uh, producing elements or they produce a lot of noise so a special attention need to be given or a special placement and if, uh, if we just keep on connecting always on block inside the chip with the wires um, to always on pads we might uh, end up uh, putting a lot of fences around these uh, this routing channel and uh, wasting a lot of area and a um, lot of other issues we might end up facing. So this uh, always on block or blocks they need to be planned in advance where do we place them. Ideally they need to be placed closer to the always on pads but sometimes it's not possible. So what do we do? Well very simple idea is that uh, you extend the always on block to the uh, periphery and up to the point where always on pad is there uh, with a buffer space uh, around that um, for the standard logic routing. So that way you will find yourself uh, that uh, the, the, you won't find that much of uh, blockage, a lot of uh, 
uh, routing congestion problems uh, would be avoided this way. And then um, you will also find that uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to be too careful. Uh, I mean, you, I shouldn't say too careful. You don't have to be worried about um, um, IR drops, worried about noise, crosstalks, and a bunch of other uh, physical design issues. That's one technique. There are many other techniques, but that's one simple technique that you extend um, the periphery of always on block to the always on pads. Good. Now another major uh, hurdle or bottleneck is where do we place analog IP or analog uh, <coughs> blocks. These are special blocks uh, and uh, today's modern SOCs we have many multiple analog IPs. Uh, they are running at different power supplies. We need to create different voltage islands uh, and, and what not um, in a multi voltage flow. Uh, we need to, uh, so in, in general, in short, the idea here is that uh, we need to pay special attention to always on and analog IPs. Analog IPs, they are, um, they are hard macros, custom built. Um, they need a special uh, requirement for power and ground, a special routing requirement. So where do we place them? Uh, what if a new engineer is not much aware of those issues, he just plays analog IP very close to GPU and third party IP where uh, he thinks that okay I have uh, too much of talking between GPU and third party IP and analog IP, let's put them closer. Okay. Now uh, in terms of routing wise it might be a good idea, however it's not really a very good idea. Because as soon as you, you put analog IP there, you have to uh, create a special, a special power and ground structures for analog IP and uh, you have to be careful about the noise, uh, signal noise, uh, uh, put different fences around it and uh, in the end you will find that uh, uh, there is uh, a higher IR drop which is not very good. So what, what is the better placement for analog IP? It's typically uh, at the corner of the chip or at a separate area where uh, there is uh, analog IP and uh, there is a significant distance between uh, standard logic and analog IP um, or the blocks which, uh, which can be or logic which can be affected uh, by the noise produced by analog IP uh, or analog blocks. That's a better placement for analog IP is typically um, sec in a secluded area. Also they would need special IO pads uh, so it's always better to keep it uh, separate in a separate area. Good. So there are many other uh, things you might be, uh, you know, you might need to pay attention for doing a good floor plan. The idea for this lecture is to go to give an overview on some basic uh, techniques, uh, some important notes uh, what we can take down. Um, noise critical, signal noise critical portions need to be placed at a certain distance from standard cells. Good. Um, now how, what is the distance? That depends on, on your technology. You might want to consult with, uh, with the technology team or your seniors or you know take an example of the earlier placement. Um, Another important point is the selection of IO pads and where do I place them? Okay, um, different uh, IO pads, uh, different parts of the, the chip uh, have different requirements for IO pads, so their placement and selection is very important. 
uh, whether those IO pads, uh, specialized design IO pads, they have ESD protection, they have a uh, bunch of other uh, bunch of other requirements. Let me put it in in short. Um, otherwise, the lecture would be very long, uh, difficult to cover in a short period of time. It is uh, it is very important also to check the power and ground connectivity before performing further detailed placement steps. So, in general, um, power plan and ground. Uh, power network planning and ground network planning needs to be done in advance. It is very similar, think about when the new home is being constructed. You know, uh, if you happen to have a chance to construct your own home uh, before, before doing anything, uh, after the, you know, first layout, you may want to assure that where should be the power ports, okay, in the home and how those going to be routed. In the same way, it's the same analogy. So power power network design and ground network design is very important. Need to plan in advance the whole chip wiring. How are we gonna do that? Where all where gonna be the horizontal channels, vertical channels, which layer for horizontal routing, which layer for vertical routing, which layers for um, vias, which layers for power, which layers for ground. Uh, so whole chip wiring needs to be planned in advance. Prepare separate wiring plans for power network, clock network, and reset networks. Group a smaller um, logic, related logic into bigger blocks. And uh, if uh, the block is too big, you might want to uh, break into two blocks as we discussed uh, earlier. Hard macros which have uh, noise critical uh, analog portion inside them, uh, it needs to be placed uh, at a specific distance from standard cells so that the noise generated uh, does not interfere with the standard cell logic or in other words um, in other words to avoid signal integrity issues signal integrity is a, one of the major concern um, your uh, final uh, layout must have to pass uh, signal integrity checks There are specific requirements for memory cells, uh, types of memories, memory stacking, how many memories do we want, where all those need to be placed. Those decisions need to be taken in advance. Uh, you must try to avoid uh, routing congestion near hard macro corners. Uh, you may use halos uh, around the corners. Um, that is nothing but a specific area fixed for a standard cell routing. Uh, halos is a, is a technical term for that. And a floor planner uh, needs to understand top level architecture of the chip. Uh, if floor planner doesn't understand, then it's, it's difficult for the person to make a good plan. So it's, it's quite important to understand from a very top level perspective uh, where, what are the different uh, blocks in the chip, uh, what's their responsibility, what these blocks are doing, so that uh, better informed can take a better decision. Now let's discuss um, people who are who are working in, in VLSI physical design. They are already aware of uh, EDA flow, but for for a new graduate or new intern or new engineer, it's it's good to know what's a typical place and route EDA flow look like. Uh, read the netlist and uh, design constraints. 
initialize the floor plan or just a basic first level floor plan, uh, give it to the tool, uh, place the macros, the standard cells, uh, assign the pins, um, higher pad placement pin assignments uh, at a first level do that, then do a basic uh, first level synthesis and uh, power network analysis. So I should say here power and ground network analysis to be more precise. Um, then if um, it's not perfect or I need to adjust something, um, do the pins uh, assignment uh, optimization uh, at the region level or top level, um, macro level, change the pin positions, basically in general optimize it to the pin optimization, then uh, analyze the timing. And if timing is not uh, good, try to optimize it. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, try to route the, the design, do the routing analysis. And uh, if everything looks okay, um, it's the initial flow plan. Good. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.